everybody. Welcome to Cake Tasta Cakes. It's Jen, and I'm going to show you how to make a mercat from Gabby's dollhouse as well as her cake. So, if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and we're going to begin. Okay, I'm going to start with the cake. I made a regular old 8 inch or 9 inch, I forget which cake, and I'm going to cover it with fondant right now. I have iced it, I chilled it in the fridge for a while. It stands, I want to say, maybe 4 inches tall, but anyway. I took some blue fondant and I took some white fondant and just twisted them together and I only kneaded them a little bit so that way I ended up with this kind of marbly, swirly, cool looking, <laughs> I don't know, blend of colors here. I wanted to be more oceany, more watery so that's what I was doing and I think it looks pretty neat. I was very happy with it. I thought it was, I thought it was kind of pretty and calming to look at. So I lay it over my cake once I get it rolled up big enough smooth down the sides first using my hands and then I'm going to go over it with a fondant paddle and when I get it all nice and smooth I'm going to use my pizza roller here my pizza cutter and just very carefully trim around the outside of the cake remove the extra and then smooth down the sides one more time and then you go there you go got a cool swirly marbly watery cake now to make the decorations for the cake I'm going to start with her paw print her paw print is pretty unique and it looks like a shell and the big pad of her paw and then the little individual fingers or toes pads are shaped like stars. So I just freehanded a scallop shell shape right here using again green gum paste. This is gum paste now. I forgot to mention the fondant was to cover the cake. This is going to be all gum paste for the decorations. All right. So I made three little stars. I made my free-handed little scallop shell. I brushed them over with a little bit of green shimmer. And now I am just sticking them on the cake. I'm using a little bit of water on the back of them. And just put them on the cake like the shape of her little paw. There you go. Like, cute, right? Nothing, nothing's, nothing too difficult here. All right. Now I'm going to start making just some weird ocean-y kind of things. And I know she doesn't necessarily live in the ocean, sort of. I don't know, her, her dynamic is kind of strange to me, but it works, so there you go. But to be, I don't know, colorful, a little more fun, I'm going with an ocean theme. So I rolled out some yellow here, really thin, cut it kind of rectangular, and I punched a whole bunch of different shaped holes out of it. And I have them trimming out the edges a little bit, as you can see, little nicks along the edge. So basically it looks like really, really Swissy Swiss cheese. And I think it's going to be, I think those are sponges, I'm not really sure. This circle that I have pretty thick here is going to become a little scallop shell. I took two little nips out of the side, as you saw, and now I'm going to use my knife blade to trim off the two sides so it's more fan-shaped, not quite that sharp edge there. And now I'm going to just use my knife to make little imprints of lines heading toward the center at the base of the shell. I'm going to have some big ones that go all the way down, put some smaller ones in between, put a little line across at the bottom. Oh, there goes my little cutter and put some little ones at the bottom right there. And now I'm just going to go over the lines that I made at the top and just roll it over the edge. So now my shell is going to be very scalloped at the top. See, it's not all smooth at the top. So there you go, nice and easy shells, right? You don't need to go buy molds. This is just gonna be some sea grass. So I make a blade and then I curve it over, curve it over, curve it over, trim out the extra, whatever you want. It's real generic. Just blades of grass. That's all you need. I'm going to let them dry just kind of wiggly a little bit right there. And now I'm going to do some more with my darker green. This is still just gum paste because I do want these to dry. I especially want these to dry because I want them to stand up on the cake. So the dark green I'm just twisting a little bit just to make it more interesting looking. Putting them to the side and just let them dry. That's it. Nothing, nothing too crazy here. I'm going to make some worm tube holes now. I've got just rolled out long pieces. I shove my ball tool into the end and just kind of make a big old cup out of it, like a reverse mushroom or something, if you will, and put them aside. They're, they're done. Like ocean stuff is super easy. As long as you make it colorful and busy, then it's going to be really good. Okay, now this pink is going to be one of her potion bottles because she's a little science kitty and she likes her experiments. And I feel like... You know, a couple little potion bottles would be fun to have. So I made the bottle itself shaped like a little kitty head. And the cork at the top is shaped kind of like her little scallop shell. And I'm using food coloring of the same color that I made it out of. So I made it out of a rose color, my little bottle here. So I'm using rose food coloring to paint in the liquid inside of it. 
and I'm taking very thin little pieces of white, thin little crescents and long little crescents and putting one around each side, just kind of outlining the little potion inside. And I'm gonna put one on the top, as you see on the little shell that's already there. And just to give it some highlights to make it look a little bit more like glass. And now since I have this pink out, I'm going to make another shell out of it. This is is gonna be more of a snail shell. So as long as you roll it really long and tapered, so it's real skinny at the end, and just start coiling on itself and just wrap it and wrap it. Make sure you have your water in there so it holds to itself and just roll it tighter and tighter and ba-bam, there you go. Hollow out the bottom there and you've got a snail shell. Like it's not hard, you don't need the molds, you really don't. <laughs> so anyway, all right, now I'm just taking some more of the pink cause I happen to have it. I just laid it out kind of like a disc, like a nasty ugly pancake and I'm poking it with the back of my paintbrush. And this is gonna become a lump of coral. It makes a really cool impression. And when you hump it around and, and bowl it over like that, even though it's kind of hollow inside, it, it works. So yeah, there you go. Gonna make some more worm tubes out of that or tube worm casings, I guess it would be. So I'm just shoving that ball end down in there, making it cup, putting it aside. If I wanted this one a little taller, so I rolled it out longer and put it aside. And the purple is going to be another bottle. So I'm tracing the first one I made and uh, I just realized I thought I was recording and I wasn't so it didn't record but I just freehanded the bottle and the scallop shell. I figured, you know, it, it would be fine and it was. So I'm sorry I didn't show you making the first one. It was just freehanded. Uh, that's all I did. I just trimmed it around and made kitty ears and called it a bottle. <laughs> so with the purple now, I'm adding some purple food coloring to the center there, just painting it in. I'm using some water to dilute it so it's not straight up food coloring. So I just make the circle in the center. I go up the stalk of the bottle a little bit, the neck of the bottle, I guess it would be. And that's it. That's it. Just, you know, make it nice and easy and it'll make it shiny too if you paint it on. So again, another couple little thin strips, little crescent strips of white gum paste to kind of make some highlights on the bottle. And then I'm going to put them aside. That's it, there you go. Now I'm gonna use some more of my purple to make another little scallop shell, just like I made the yellow one before. So I had the circle, cut out the two edges at the bottom, made my lines at the top and bottom and just rolled it over the edge to make it more scallopy. I still had some purple left, so I just took a wad of it and started poking it really hard to make some more coral. And now I'm going to make another one of my Swiss cheese pieces because why not, right? More color, more variety, the better it'll look. I just cut a whole bunch of different holes out and then I put it aside. Um, the yellow and the purple, I tried laying over different things. I had uh, the handle of my pizza cutter, for example. I had uh, a different rolling pin that I rolled the other one over. So that's why, that's why excuse me, when they dried, they kind of hold their shape and they're wavy looking. All right, so I had my paw print. I put on my two bottles, and now I'm just gonna start putting on all the accessories. Uh, my yellow is freestanding, so I just stood it up, put my coral on there. I have my pieces of twisty grass. I'm just adding a little water to it, sticking them to the sides of the cake, but since they dried enough, they're going to stand up past the top of the cake, so that looks good. I am using pieces of dried spaghetti to skewer my little worm tube casing things in place. I just poke the cake with it and then just spike down on top of it with the with the casing and then it, it stands up nice and neat. So I'm just, again, just placing things here and there wherever I feel like it'll look good. So there's a piece of dried spaghetti right there. It was a little too long so I broke off some and then I just press down the piece on top and, and then it stays. So there's two more pieces right there. I had a couple more, so there's one and there's the other and it just slides right on in and that way it'll stand and it won't fall over and it just looks super cute. All right, so more grass here and there. Now I'm taking some white gum paste and just rolling balls and putting them here and there for bubbles because Mercat loves her bubbles. She loves her bubbles. And if you don't want to use, you know, gum paste for that, you could use just some candy beads or whatever you happen to have. So just keep filling in your cake till you're happy with it and then get ready to make Mercat. Okay, to begin our Mercat, we are gonna start first with her body. I took some very light green here. It was supposed to be more of a mint, kind of a light mint bluey green, but it came out a little bit darker than I think it should have been. So a little note to you guys already. 
make it a little lighter. Okay, <laughs> anyway, I'm rolling out a big long sausage here and I'm kind of tapering it at the bottom because that's going to be where her tail comes together or kind of like pinches together before it fans out into the fin at the bottom of her tail. I'm going to have her bending at the tail so that way I can have a lollipop stick down the center of her and she can be standing freely on the cake. So I'm starting with her being bent at this angle. As you can see, I've been using my rolling pin to kind of flatten out the tail. And every time I flatten it out, it makes it really big. <laughs> so you have to cut a little triangle out of the center like so. And then I'm just tape taking little nips off of the tail in order to get more of a heart shape, I guess you could say, uh, at the end of it. Her scales go all the way down her entire tail, which is kind of weird in my opinion. But that's how she's made, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm not too worried about it being perfectly round or smooth or anything because eventually it's going to all get covered up. Now that I've got my sausage with a tail, I am sticking my lollipop stick down it as advertised. And I'm going to stick it into a block of styrofoam. I have a little paper towel on top of it there. And this is going to support it, allow it to dry nice and neat, whatever. Now I've got it ready to go. Okay, I am going to just kind of blast through this part because it was a whole lot of rinse and repeat. Do it again and again and again and again. I rolled out some purple, some nice dark purple. Very, very thin. And I mean like really thin, like paper thin, thin, really thin. I punched a whole bunch of little circles out of it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other colors. And I chose, I mean, I really could have done a smaller circle if I, I do have a smaller circle cutter. But I felt like trying to put scales all over her entire body, I'd be here all day and it might make me crazy. So I went with a slightly bigger size. If you have the patience of saints and are more patient than me, use a smaller circle. But this is what I did. Basically making confetti. I just used pink and green and purple and blue. And I was trying to get how she has that iridescent shine, you know, in her scales. Whichever way the light's hitting, she has all different colors reflecting. That's what I'm trying to do by having all these different colors because I can't make iridescent gum paste. It might exist out there. If it does, it's, you know, beyond me at this point in my life. So this is my next best thing. I'm starting at the bottom at the t of the tail and I'm going to build my way up. So this way the scales are going to overlap in the proper direction. And I'm just sticking them on. I am trying to kind of start with the outline of the tail and... Put your circles next to each other when you um, lay them down. Don't overlap them unless when you overlap them, you go between the two circles you're overlapping. So you see those two right there. I just put the pink on top, the pink next to that one, and so on. I'm going to add more water. I had to keep adding a lot of water. And it was, yeah, just a whole lot of this. So you can see I'm just kind of building up rows and rows of scales. The tail is kind of sloppy because it's so bent that it's hard to make nice neat rows out of it. And again, her fin for some reason has scales on it, so that kind of threw me off a little bit too. But I'm doing the best I can. I'm sticking on my scales. I am mostly doing purple. Trying to do a couple of the colored ones mixed in here and there. I'm also trying to do um, more of the lighter colors to the sides of her body and more purple in the center of her body. Because again, it's supposed to be reflecting light and I, I don't know, it was difficult. What I'm doing here is I'm wrapping uh, little circles around the back of the tail. Because as you saw, the tail's kind of thick, or the fin, excuse me, is kind of thick. So on the back is where I have it overlap any thickness there and just bend it over. So then it bends into the scales on the front, as you see. And then it looks all put together. See that? It's like you'd never know. Okay, time skip, right? I just put a whole bunch of scales on, nothing changed, <laughs> just a whole lot of scales, as you see, and now I'm kind of going for the top of her scales. Um, she has almost like a bodice type shape, or bathing suit shape, so I'm putting my two scales there on either side of her chest, and I cut circles in half, and I'm just going downward at an angle, because if you look at the pictures of her, her scales are just like cut off in this perfectly wavy little line across the front of her. It probably has a design name. I don't know what it is, but that's what I'm doing by cutting my circles in half. And I'm using that flat edge of my circle, half circle, to make the clean line across the top of her bodice or scales or bathing suit or whatever you want to call it. Okay, 
So that one fell off, stick it back on. Just a little more water, a little pressure, there you go. Now a little bit more of a time jump here. You're gonna see that I put a lot of scales on the back of her and it was just a whole lot more of the same so you didn't need to say it. Now I'm going to try to add a little shimmer to her scales. So what I'm doing is wrapping a little piece of plastic wrap around the top trying to go you know against the <laughs> edge of the scales as much I can and then I have some silver spray just silver edible spray that I'm trying to lightly go over the scales with so the colors show through and it kind of makes it shiny and iridescent it, it worked pretty well not great but pretty well so now I'm going to move on to her arms I rolled out a long piece of that light green again cut it in half now I've got two little arms that I'm going to work on I trim off the extra. I kind of wedged it so it made it um, or, or rolled it skinnier there toward the center. See how I'm doing that a little bit? And I'm threading it on a piece of dried spaghetti and then shoving it on into her body. Connect it with a little bit of water. And yeah, there you go. Now her arm is out. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I had rolled it out. Nice round end. Use a piece of dried spaghetti. I had cut the end at a kind of an angle so it will go up against her shoulders nicely. And there you go. Stick it in. There you go. No problem, right? Easy. Now for her head. Her head is, once again, enormous. I don't know what it is about these little preschool cartoons these days, but the character's heads are enormous. And so it's heavy. So I'm going to have to let her body sit for a bit and her head sit for a bit before I can connect them permanently. But I'm going to show you how I made it and how I did it. So I have a kind of an oval going there, like a bar of soap, and I press down with my ball tool in the center, really big, put a little angle on each corner there, and for her nose, it's a little pink ball that I kind of shaped into a heart, because her nose is very heart-shaped. So that's what I'm doing there, and you can see her eyes are very cat-like. She's got nice cat-like eyes. I'm going to fill them with white. You can see I rolled the white gum paste so it's pointed at each end and round in the center, just to follow the shape of the eye as well. And I'm just pressing in the center with my ball tool in order to make little wells for the blue. So again, just a little ball of blue gum paste to fill them up. Now be careful you don't make her eyes too big. Like the eyes themselves are huge in her head, but the blue doesn't fill up all that much. It does leave a lot of white around it. The black of the iris does take up a lot of the blue inside, so make sure to give those a nice amount too. And I'm using an edible food coloring marker to make her kid, little kitty mouth like so and her little kitty eyelashes. She has three of them, just small and pretty coming up from the corner of her eyes. There you go. Isn't she cute? Like super cute. <laughs> I was really happy with her. I added two little balls of white gum paste to her eyes for highlights. Just like that. And already she's so cute. Like I was really happy with her. Now, I don't know if you saw my DJ Cat video that I made, but I had trouble with using just a little bit of food coloring on her cheeks to give her the pink, the pink because with the darker coloring, his blue or purple, I forget, face showed through. So I went ahead and made just two very light pink circles and stuck them on her cheeks instead of using food coloring. All right, these scales that I'm making here, you're like, oh, more circles. Yes, indeedy. Those are for the top of her head, as you can see. I used a smaller circle cutter that I have. It's probably the size of a soda straw, like a regular old drinking straw, if I had to guess. So they are smaller than the body scales, and I am trying to put them on her head in the way that she has, like, if you look at the front of her head, uh, of her scales, they kind of have the center curve, and then it goes back a little bit, and each one has a side curve that then goes back behind her ears. So that's what I'm trying to do. Once again, she has that, the, the lines are so perfect that her scales are just like cut off. I couldn't really do that. So this is what I did. I just did the best I could. I tried to make it like three, you know, a big piece in the center with two small rounder parts at the sides. And I'm also wrapping her up in some plastic wrap, just like I did with the other one with her body in order to give it a light little spritz, spritz, and that's it. That's it. Okay. Yep make their scales a little shiny. If you try this method and you find that you get some um, of the spray on the green of her face or whatever, if you just use a wet paintbrush and just paint it off, you know, just wipe it off very carefully and you can use a paper towel or your finger, you know, just blot it kind of and it'll clean right up. It's very forgiving. So there you go. See, she's so cute. <laughs> I was really happy with her. I love her face so far. All right, now I'm going to move on to her ears. 
I've got a little triangle of the same green that I used for her body and her head. And it's a perfect triangle there. I'm just rounding off the tip of it a little bit. And I'm using the handle of my paintbrush to kind of hollow out the center. I'm going to end up filling it with a piece of dark green, as you see. And once again, using just the back of my paintbrush handle to kind of smooth it out and press it up into the peak. So you get a triangle with a triangle, just the quintessential stereotypical cat ear. <laughs> Any cat ear you've ever thought of or drawn in your entire life as a kid, there it is. So make another one, make sure they're the same size, stick them on with a little bit of water, and she is coming together so nicely. Now we're going to make her little starfish hair accessory. I had a star cutter and I just used that. I rolled out some hot pink. I left it kind of thick because I noticed her starfish does have some thickness to it. And I am just pinching and pulling and twisting very gently the legs or the arms or the points of the star to make it longer, to make it more like a starfish. Stick it on her head. There you go. Super cute, right? Okay, one last detail. I'm going to draw the pads of her paws on. Her little finger pads are little stars. And the main pad of her paw is shaped like a shell. So just, you know, keep that in mind when you draw it. And once she's all done and she has time to set, which is probably overnight, honestly, put her on your cake and it's adorable, right? So there's Murkat from Gabby's Dollhouse. And I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe as I may have mentioned before because it actually does help me out. Check out my many other videos that are out there. I have a few other cats from Gabby's Dollhouse as well if you're interested. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tasta Cakes.